Yes. You appear to uh, view the mental or conscious processes as being at the phenomena, that is, uh, bypass without true causal roles in, in uh, mm. behavior. <clears throat> I was wondering uh, if they're truly uh, without a causal role in human behavior, how is it that uh, verbal expressions and descriptions of these mental connections come to be? That is, uh, uh, how could a powerless byproduct be able to influence uh, our ability to speak and our ability to write? Uh, I'm not sure I got the point. How, how, these are these are uh, epiphenomena or byproducts, but what what do they do or what use? How is it that we're able to speak about them here today as as being something that exists if they haven't in some way been able to uh, signal that through some kind of causal mechanism? Oh no, but uh, this is this would be true of any mythology. I could talk about all kinds of mythologies here today too. You see, speak about them as if we believe in them. I don't believe mm. in mythologies. No, you don't now, but I mean, I, I could be addressing uh, an audience that does, actually. Uh, the fact that uh, people talk very seriously about ha haunted houses and so on uh, doesn't mean to me that there must be haunted houses. Um, I, I, I don't so really think, I, I don't even think, then? what? Do you seem now to be denying that they exist altogether? rather than denying that they have a causal role. No, I, I, what I'm denying is the existence of anything non-physical. Oh, if, if, if that's what you mean by epiphenomena, epiphenomena then I, I would deny their existence. What we feel are our own bodies. And one of the difficulties there is that we don't have very good nervous systems for doing this. I've made that point elsewhere. You see, by the time the verbal community got around, to asking people, why did you do that? Why are you doing that? What are you going to do now? The only nervous systems that had evolved were those like the interoceptive nervous system concerned with internal economy, or the proprioceptive system with posture and so on, or the exteroceptive. There were no nervous systems that went to those parts of the brain that are really involved in these explanations that you'd like to be able to give. So you don't have nerves going to the right places to talk about this kind of stuff that uh, seems to be so important. Physiologists will get there with instruments eventually, but we're not going to get there introspectively. Perhaps through a combination of introspection and physiology will get there fast. Well, uh, if you can demonstrate that, uh, yes, and there are those who work on introspection in close connection with physiologists, and I have no objection to that at all. I think people working in the field of visual perception, for example, the McCulloch effect and so on, things that uh, Dick Hell does and so on, these are done primarily because of the special information they would give a physiologist with their behavioral data, I think. And at least they can be, give, be, can be given a behavioral statement. Yes? Dr. Skinner, we're all delighted to have you here. And uh, it is a bit of anxiety that I uh, ask questions. You don't see any difference, and I'm not sure I do either. Um, certainly, uh, a drug will produce a feeling, as it will change the state of a body, which can then be reported by someone who describes his own body and has learned to do so. I would ask you, first of all, though, if, if your patient says to you, I feel depressed, should you not be rather curious as to how he and under what conditions he learned to use that word. Yes. Um, and would you not expect that it would be taught to him at times when it was his behavior that was depressed rather than a feeling which no one else could see? I don't know which came first. What? Regardless of what he answers, I don't know which came first. I'm well, all right. Let, let's, let's let that go. Um, you, you, uh, you see that the person is not doing what he... He doesn't pay attention to business. He sits and doesn't say anything in the conversation and so on. You say, that man's depressed. He may have his head down and so on. Lange, uh, the James Lange theory, Lange was much better than James in discussing and describing these conditions of the body which are weighed down with grief and so on. He, he has a lot of depression in there too. Well, all of this is the way this, that society teaches a person to say, I am depressed. Now, at the same time, a person feels something inside too. And Possibly, there can arise a condition with none of the external stuff at all, and the person will say, I am depressed. 
And so if he comes to you and he says that, you, you could say, this person is telling me that his body is in a state, so far as he has any nerves going to do it, uh, associated with the conditions which have led the verbal community to teach him to use the word depressed. Now, do you want to say that it was that bodily state that caused him to have his head down and not, pay, not, not speak up in the conversation and so on? or vice versa. That's the egg and the hen question that you're raising. Which came first, I suppose? I would say they're both part of the same kinds of thing. There are certain conditions that do this. Now, what do you want to do about it, though? Uh, how are you going to treat this? If it's a drug thing, you get rid of the drug, obviously. Uh, Dr. Skinner, you see, we're talking about symptom removal. And uh, that's why, coming back to one of your earlier questions mm -hmm. that you answered and said you really don't know the answer to, why they all kind of therapies work is because most are self-limiting mm. and people resolve their own problems yes. whether they're social or biophysical mm. or uh, emotional yes. so whatever you do works i mean in most situations most people are going to get better just because aspirin relieves headache doesn't mean that the lack of aspirin is the cause of the headache no that's true but are you are you suffering from, let's, let's make it a toothache instead of a headache. I don't know where it is in the head, but uh, when, you take a, when you take aspirin for a toothache, are you, are you getting rid of the ache? And if so, why do you bother with a dentist? The dentist, gets rid, dentist treats the tooth, not the ache, right? Aspirin, no. aspirin, cuts no. off, aspirin cuts off the connection between the tooth and you. I would agree. We treat symptoms. If, they, if it didn't ache, the, the uh, dentist would not treat the tooth. The patient would never come to him. So he treats the ache too, but he treats it in a different way. Well, he can do that, yes, of course. Well, then he's treating the ache just as well as the man who gives him aspirin. He's okay. treating the way the patient feels. If the patient didn't feel bad, she wouldn't well, come uh, in, or he wouldn't come in. If you, if you would change the way the patient feels to what the patient feels, I would, would be very happy about that. I think we do that. Yeah. I hope that we do that, regardless yeah. what we do. Yeah whether we approach it from the, quote, behavioral viewpoint or from the psychological viewpoint, because I think it's the same feeling. The only, my only concern here is to, to, is to see the, the role of the operant kind of behavior in these states, whereas uh, the Wolpe kind of desensitization might deal with the feeling. Now, supposing you've got a, a person who's moved from one city to another, is supposedly a common uh, source of, of depression. You've got a whole repertoire that works very well in one city. You call up your friends, and they're there. You go to the store, and the store is there. You go to the movies, and their movies are there, and so on. Everything, the whole, you have a big repertoire of behavior. It all works. You move to another city, nothing. The phone, that number won't dial up your friend. There's no store where you, where you went before, and so on. And then you get depressed. At least it's, it's said that this is a very common kind of depression. I don't think it may be a very important thing to them anyway. Now, what can you do? Well, could you desensitize by having a person relax and uh, try to get rid of the feeling of depression, or could you just build up a new repertoire of the new town, in which case the depression would disappear because the conditions uh, which were causing it have, dis been, have disappeared. Which, which would you, uh, I, I don't want to ask you to say which you prefer, but I, I myself would think that in that case it is the, the unavailability of a suitable behavior in a given environment that gives you this feeling of depression. And the, the solution to that is to build suitable behavior. You very get, this, oh, get this very often, and kids just getting out of college. They've had a very successful college career. They've had just the right behavior with their friends in college or their courses and so on. Suddenly they're cast on the world, no job or a job that they've, they're not familiar with and so on. They get this same kind of depression. They're, they don't have any behavior that's really paying off. Now, you can deal with that as a feeling, or you can build up behavior and let, get, help them find something that pays off until they have another repertoire which is just as good as the one they had in college, and then, then they're on their way. Now, does that, does, does, where, where are you going to put the feeling, the state felt in that picture?